I am a god, you dull creature. And I will not be bullied by... Puny god. In this video, we're going to reveal the true nature of the Toxic God, an ancient entity that poisons entire star systems and planets. And for the truly pious amongst us, we may finally realize if we've met the one true God, or if this is yet another false pretender. So without any further ado, let's dive in. In order to actually find the Toxic God, you must both take and complete the Knights of the Toxic God quest chain, which is only available if you take the Knights of the Toxic God Origin, one of the two new origins coming with Stellaris Toxoids. The Guardians of Death is a build I'm going to look at today with the sole intent of both maximizing the benefits we get from this new origin, which comes with some massive economic drawbacks at the start of the game, whilst also trying to minimize any problems we will get with them. Knights of the Toxic God is quite an interesting origin. It does give you an extra planet, or an extra habitat I should say, right at the start of the game, but you get three fewer pops. So basically anything that gives us a bonus to pop growth, especially pop growth where we have not very many pops on the planet, is very, very helpful for our empire because it will help not just our home world, but also this habitat we have in orbit as well. So things like incubators, which grant you massive pop growth at low levels of pop numbers, and fanatic xenophobe, which gives you a flat plus 20% growth speed, will be massively helpful to our empire in order to get on our feet economically. Additionally, a trait like conservation which will reduce our pop consumer goods upkeep, and authoritarian unlocking stratified economy with again a lower consumer goods upkeep will massively help us in the early game as we start with basically no resources. Masterful Crafters is a fantastic civic at the moment and I definitely recommend you put something like this in to increase our consumer goods output, engineering research, and get a little bit of extra trade value for some precious energy. And functional architecture will not only increase the number of building slots we have available on our star base and our home world, but also give us a 15% decrease to building and district costs, which will be essential given how few minerals we will have for the first five to 10 years. And if you're enjoying this video, please redouble your belief in the like button. Your home system will have a single planet or asteroid in there with six energy and three alloys. I'd recommend you spend your 100 minerals at the start of the game building a mining station here straight away because we are going to need those resources. Even at 21 pops, we're still getting plus 16% pop growth from incubators, so it is rather helpful. On the other hand, our habitat here at four pops is getting plus 30% from incubators. When we look at what our bonuses are from Fanatic Xenophobe as well, that is totaling plus 50%. In order to find the Toxic God, you have to complete the Quest for the Toxic God situation, which is a massive situation that requires 1,000 progress to complete. We can increase the monthly change by increasing the number of night pops we have on our habitat here, our fortress station. Do bear in mind though, at the start of the game and until we've actually found the Toxic God, we can only have a single fortress station with knights on it, and so this is going to be quite an important resource. Do not lose it. We can also increase the speed at which we quest for the Toxic God by going from regular funding to generous funding. You want to do this as soon as possible, but do bear in mind you'll get a whopping minus 30% from monthly energy credits and minus 15% alloys from jobs when you do this. Actually, once you've built the amounts of proliferation, a mining station, you should be absolutely fine to switch over as overall the increase in energy and alloys from this one mining station should at the start of the game at least counteract this negative modifier. But once you do, you get a massive additional bonus to the monthly change here from our speed. In order to get more knights, we can basically do only one thing. The orders keep on our fortress station here gives us plus one night job per 10 pops. So we want to increase the number of pops on this habitat all the way up to 10 relatively quickly. Though I would recommend you do focus on building some basic economy and possibly an extra research lab on your capital in order to get the ball rolling with your economy. Do not neglect your economy over the quest for the toxic god. Both your empire and the quest must work in tandem. With regards to Ascension, if you manage to transcend while you're on the quest for the Toxic God, it can help with some of the quests and some of the event chains. It can give you some special options that are helpful for completing things, but it isn't necessary at all. On the subjects of quests, as you complete quests, you'll get the option to increase the unity or research output of your knights. This will increase their base output, which will be further modified by things like 
squires on your star base, and research assistant. However, the squires only add plus two amenities and plus 2% output from jobs, so it's probably better to have no squires and simply fill this star base up with research buildings instead. Whilst always trying to bear in mind, we do want to maximize the number of pops on this habitat to get as many knights as possible, thus increasing our monthly change for quests from the toxic god more and more. And if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to get your hands on Stellaris Toxoids or any of the other DLC for Stellaris, and you'd also like to support this channel, you can do so by following the link down below to Humble Bundle and purchasing it from the Humble Bundle store. Do look out for the device part of the tale. You definitely want to get your hands on it because you will get an activate dimensional manipulation device on your special knight's habitat. That will grant extra living space on the habitat in exchange for some dark matter. You of course also get extra bonuses to your research output from your knights, which is really good too. Getting plus 0.5 building splots per order's domain and plus one housing to them, as well as 50% maximum districts on the habitat, cannot be overlooked. As this will massively increase the total number of pops you can get away with shoving onto this habitat, and therefore increase the total number of night jobs you can have. Eventually, you will find the Toxic God and do battle with it. After you have defeated it in battle, you can either choose to say, oh, Toxic God, smite our enemies. This will end the quest. You will take control of the Toxic God, a Colossus that can toxify worlds. With the end of the quest, many knights will eventually leave the order. So do be warned, if you choose to take the biological Colossus, the Toxic God, on your side, you will lose a lot of your knights, which are currently providing a lot of research and a lot of unity to your empire. Or alternatively, you can, you can just kill the toxic god once and for all and decide, no, this biological monstrosity is not the real toxic god. This isn't Grunkle Gurgle. And actually, we're going to keep questing nonetheless. Of the two of these, let's investigate what both options do. The toxic god isn't like any old regular colossus though. It's somewhere of a mix between a star eater and a regular colossus. Now, why do I say that? Well, if we take a look at the weapons it is packing, not only does it have a planet killer weapon, but it also has the Toxic God's attack swarm. So it has strike craft, it has Toxic God venom beams, it has Toxic God defense swarm, point defense lasers, and Toxic God spit. The venom beam is basically a titan weapon. The strike craft are very effective and the spit goes entirely through shield and armor with 100% penetration and a very low cooldown rate, giving it pretty high average damage and massive range. You can chuck this at what seems like a relatively fortified system and laugh with glee as the toxic god eats through the star base defenses there, soaking up all of the damage with its regenerative hull tissue, meaning that it will continually regenerate hull points. And then once the system is down, you can make your way over to a planet and begin the process of toxifying it. This will have a similar firing process to any regular Colossus. It will charge up and then it will fire its weapon. This weapon will turn the planet into a toxic world as the planet will now be toxified, but don't worry. The planet won't actually be lost to you. You could still turn it back into a regular world if you take the Detox Ascension perk because it will become a toxic terraforming candidate. You will need to grab the Climate Restoration technology, but that shouldn't be a problem when you are this late into the game. Now, remember we said that you're going to lose some knights? Well, here it is, the fate of the Order. You'll get a massive boost of unity, but on the other hand, the Order's keep building will now support many fewer knights. And as you can see, you'll only get one night job per 20 pops rather than per 10 pops, which is quite a bit worse. But what do you think about the new Knights of the Toxic God origin and the Toxic God itself? Let me know down in the comments below. Would you prefer to keep the Toxic God around or slay the False Pretender? I'd like to hear from you. On the other hand, what if we were to go back in time and change our fate? What if we were to slay this false pretender, this false god, rather than praying to it? Well, if we do that, we will then get a relic, the more of the toxic entity. This will give you a passive plus 15% strike craft damage, which is fine, but the real power here comes in when you activate it. When you activate it, you unlock a decision to consecrate a habitat and establish an order's castle there. You can only do this once every 10 years. 
However, it is still something you might like to do, especially if you finish this chain. Of course, there are other relics that you may prefer to activate in the same time, so you may be left with something of a stark choice. These secondary orders castles do require you to spend some influence and wait one year for it to pop up. And they aren't quite as good as your main orders keep, they provide two night jobs, which is rather good. That is quite a lot of science and unity production, as well as stability and whatever other resource outputs you've got. For example, here, each of my knights is granting plus 1.5% alloy output for my entire empire. So an extra two knights is plus 3% alloy output empire wide every 10 years. But unlike the orders keep on your home system's habitat, you won't get plus one knight job for every 10 population or every unit of population so these are somewhat limited. You do get access to the Order's domain building so you can boost these knight job outputs with further squire jobs, but generally plus 2% extra output from the knights is not really worth it. If you've enjoyed this video on Stellaris Toxoids, but you'd like to know what my opinion is on the new Stellaris Toxoids DLC and whether you should buy it, click the video on screen now.